This presentation is about feeling alive and energized and ready to go when you wake up in the morning. It is about taking back your energy, taking back the aliveness you had as a little child. Now, I come from the context that you have a certain amount of consciousness, energy, and attention at your disposal, and that this energy, attention, consciousness, these thoughts and emotions are dispersed throughout a lifetime and occupied, invested and occupied by certain things. And the more your energy disperses into various directions, the weaker it becomes. So let's examine how to take back this energy. For that, we first have to look at what it goes into. And one of those items are unreleased and unforgiven past issues. Such unprocessed past issues repeat themselves in your mind. You think of them again and again and again and again. They occupy your mind. They take you away from your here and now. And that can become a problem because the here and now is your only place of power. It is the only time you can influence reality. And as your mind drifts into the past and into the future, out of the here and now, you actually experience a loss of power, a loss of clarity, and a loss of influence to your reality. So these past issues replay and replay and replay and replay. And once you get tired of them replaying and repeating, instead of releasing them, what we often do is we push them down. We suppress them into the subconscious. However, pressing them down does not give us a surplus of energy. It still takes energy to keep them there, to keep them suppressed, to keep them down. And the fact that we have suppressed them may even become unconscious in time. And the fact that we're using energy for that may also be unconscious. So, assuming that you have a lot of trash waiting to be uncovered in your subconscious is not that bad of a thing because it allows your, you to start undigging these things. Undigging them and allowing them to come to light will help you to release them. Now, this is not such a difficult process. This is not a process of uh, catharsis or of uh, having to look for problems all the time. But it's rather a matter of looking at your life, at your experience of life, looking at what does not work, and then, from that, tracing it back to a subconscious belief or unreleased or unforgiven past issue and to simply look at that issue and to ask yourself whether you are ready to let go of it or forgive it. And that is actually, um, that can be a little bit painful, but if you do not resist the pain if you allow the emotion to just run through without resistance it's only painful for a few minutes you see and anything that is too painful to confront is often processed during your sleeping time anyway and things that are very 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 painful to confront you can release chunk by chunk you don't have to do it all in one session so this is the purpose of releasing, to identify 
what you're experiencing that does not feel right, that does not um, have anything to do with your aliveness, your clarity, your passion, to trace that to some subconscious program running, um, to look at that program, to make the unconscious conscious, and then to release it. Another item um, where energy gets siphoned off and sucked in are worries about the future, concerns about what will be, and again, um, anything that takes you out of the here and now, out of your presence, out of your place and time of power, um, lessens your energy. So then your attention and energy are stuck in the past and in the future and anywhere else but here. So all of this thinking about the future, all of this worrying, actually comes from uh, resisting to feel. Every time you resist a wave of energy, a wave of emotion, and suppress it, you suppress your life energy itself, and you feel a little more unable to live the life you want and do the things you like. Tiredness comes easy, you feel good perhaps in the first few hours of the morning, and then when afternoon comes around you'll already start feeling tired. However, if you take back your energy, you'll feel fresh and energized most of the time. Because your energy, your life force, is no longer stuck in these various uh, realities. So, worries about the future can also be released in a similar way by looking at them, feeling them, and then deliberately dropping them, letting them go, asking yourself, okay, when could I let go of this? Is it really helping me to focus on this all the time? Another way to seize worries about the future is, of course, to set goals, to have a goal or plan laid out for your future, to have a good idea of what you'd prefer to create in the future. So if you know exactly what you'd like to create for your future, you have a really good picture of that that can lessen your worries. If, you have, if you're absolutely committed to improvement in the future, there's not much to worry about. You've decided the future will improve. You've decided things will get better and better and better. And then there's not much to worry about. However, that decision and that commitment is made in the here and now. So if you feel right in the here and now, that takes care of the details, that takes care of the future. Now, another area... Um, attention and energy get dispersed are unfinished tasks. Anything that is not complete keeps running in the mind. The mind keeps repeating things it thinks are incomplete, are unfinished. It's trying to be helpful and it keeps repeating them. This is why some songs um, keep repeating in your mind. You heard something on the radio, even if you don't like the song, even if it's a terrible song, it keeps repeating in your mind. And this is often because you interrupted the song before it was finished, before it was complete. So you were in the car, heard a song in the radio, then you turned it off before the song was finished, and the track keeps repeating in your mind because it was interrupted. So that's an interesting phenomena that you can look at yourself. So in that case, you would actually have to play the song to completion, and then uh, you could release it. You could, would have to finish it and perhaps even uh, replace it with a nicer song.
So this does not apply only to songs, of course. It applies to your business, to projects, to your relationships, your communications. Incomplete communications, for example. You had a fight uh, with someone and then you separate from that person. And the fight, because a state of aggravation is an incompletion, the fight keeps occupying your mind for hours, maybe days, maybe even weeks, until you either release it or press it into subconscious. Releasing it gives you a surplus of energy, suppressing it does not. Any errands you haven't taken care of yet, any type of procrastination uh, is an unfinished task that occupies your attention. That's why usually when letters come in, um, I, I usually take care of them immediately. So I open my post office uh, box, take out my letters, and I handle them immediately, at once, so that they do not uh, occupy my attention. There is almost zero procrastination in my life, precisely for this reason. So the way to handle unfinished tasks would be, for example, to write them down, to write down everything that is uh, bothering you, occupying your attention, anything that is unfinished, and then to either prioritize those unfinished tasks or to write down how you're going to handle them, finish them, and by what time. One of the strongest energy suckers are lies, transgressions, hurting other people, broken agreements. And uh, tra your transgressions actually come from not having enough energy. So not having enough energy leads you to do more things um, to have even less energy. So let's say you um, have dispersed a lot of energy into worries about the future, unforgiven past issues, unfinished tasks, and you have less and less and less energy, and then you think you have to transgress or um, commit something negative against someone to compensate for the lack of energy. So in my uh, professional view, all crime um, is caused or correlates to lack of energy, lack of life energy, and the uh, desire to experience some sort of energy, some sort of change, even if that is destructive change. You see, any lie you voice um, needs to be kept secret, and the needing to keep secret occupies your attention, occupies your mind. You keep after uh, remembering that you lied, and who you lied to, and so forth, and so on. So the more you lie, the more constricted and, and small you become. Because in the end you're not allowed to say anything anymore for fear of being uncovered and discovered. So if you have, if you're afraid of people finding out about you, or, or if you're ashamed that people might find out what kind of person you really are, it's uh, because you've transgressed in the past and suppressed those transgressions into your subconscious. So a good technique would be to confess, to write out a confession of all your transgressions, all activities that were motivated by hate anger, fear, and so forth, to write out all of your broken agreements, to make a confession, at least toward yourself, if not toward the other, and then uh, to either apologize, at least toward yourself, even better toward the other, um, and if those transgressions were very severe, to make amends, 
So with the most severe transgressions, such as uh, murder or rape, you'd have to make amends in order to balance out the energy. This is uh, like karma, like balancing out karma. That's just how the universe works. Uh, what you took away from the whole, what you took away from society, you have to give back. And of course, it's much more powerful if this is self-motivated. If you make this realization, rather than being punished by society or forced to by society, the, if the realization comes from you, if you see this yourself, how this is uh, binding your energy. Of course, all agreements that you make with people, all oaths, all promises, are binding. They uh, bind energy. But what binds energy even more are your broken agreements. Because uh, you've made a commitment, you've established an energy bond to another person, and then you uh, abort that without the consent of the other person. And that establishes um, a hurt between you and that other person and binds a lot of energy. So you'd have to really authentically handle all of that to get your life energy back. Now, all of this can be summarized into desire and resistance. So any kind of desire and resistance binds your energy, wastes your energy. Desire and resistance take you out of the here and now. So a desire would either have to be accomplished and fulfilled in order to stop taking attention, stop binding energy, or it would have to be released. Those are the two ways to um, have a desire stop taking your energy. You fulfill the desire or you release it. However, desire is not really necessary to fully enjoy something. If you have strong desire and you accomplish and fulfill it, um, the chances are you'll just project that same desire to a new thing, to another thing. It's not necessary to have a very strong longing or feeling of lack. Now, normal desires uh, are okay. They help you uh, move toward your goal. But very strong cravings and longings are a real energy waster that are best released instead of uh, accomplished. You see, if you have the strong desire for sugar, for instance, and you get your hit and your kick of sugar, that's not really going to fulfill you. A few hours later, the desire is going to be back until you've released that specific desire. Desire indicates lack. Very strong desire indicates a strong lack. Um, resistance keeps in mind what you resist. So when you resist something, you force yourself to hold it in mind, to keep focused on it, and to keep experiencing it. And that's the paradox. The more you resist it, the more you experience it. If you resist it very, very strongly and push it into your subconscious, something interesting happens. It starts manifesting in your surroundings. So let's say you strongly, strongly resist or hate a certain kind of person and you don't allow yourself to consciously hate that person. You're too ashamed of hating them. So you press that aspect, that dark shadow of yours, into the subconscious. And what happens then is that to compensate, the subconscious creates that in your environment. So that person is going to show up in your environment. You're going to notice that person everywhere. 
So in this case, the first step would be to allow yourself to actually hate that person, to be an actually hateful person, to stop resisting the resistance. And then the second step would be to stop hating, to release that resistance. But first, you would allow it, because you, if you build resistance upon resistance upon resistance, it's never going to dissolve. Dissolve, And the second step would be to release the hate. But first you have to own the hate before you release it. You have to own your shadow before you release your shadow. So within you, there is an inner liar. There is an inner thief. There is an inner asshole, so to speak. And you'd have to admit to that. You'd, you'd have to say, okay, I admit um, the liars are not only the others, not only the others are wrong, not only the others are stupid, but I am stupid. I am a liar. I am a thief. You see, you have all these aspects within you, but you suppress them so much that they start projecting around you. And once you admit that you are indeed stupid, you are indeed a liar, you are indeed a thief, and so forth, you can actually authentically, after you've owned it, let go of this and not be a liar, a thief, stupid, a criminal, and so forth. And as strange as this may sound to you, it's actually a very effective approach to take back energy very, very effective. So, the least you could do to take back your energy and to feel more alive is to list all of these items. It's very simple. You take a piece of paper and you list all of your past issues unforgiven issues, unreleased issues, things that once bothered you and may subconsciously still be bothering you. You list all the things you experience in life that you don't want to experience, all of your resistances. You list all of your desires, those are things you don't have but would like to have. You list all of your concerns about the future, You list all of your uh, lies, transgressions, broken agreements, things that were motivated by negative emotions, all of your wrongdoing, all of your weaknesses. You list all of your unfinished errands, unfinished tasks, and you list everything your attention has been occupied with. So, attention is also occupied this is not a complete map, by the way. Attention is also occupied by entertainment, of course, by internet. So you invest a lot of energy into trivia, meaningless trivia. Um, and the reason entertainment becomes necessary is because of lack of energy. So once your energy is depleted, once your will is depleted, once your power is depleted, the only thing left to do is to flop down on the couch and be entertained. Um, you disperse your energy with endless conversations, talking, chatter, phone calls, uh, SMS, message texting. You disperse your energy with overeating, with drugs, with painkillers, with sex, with porn, with uh, many, many different items. So you can list all of that. And to balance out the list a little bit and to get rid of worries about the future, you can also list the goals you are willing to commit to and the things you appreciate about life. That would be another list. Things I appreciate and my goals. You write those down to balance out the negative list a little bit so that your attention is not only focused on the negative. So once you have your negative list... Um, you can think about or write down how to handle each item. How are you going to forgive or release? 
with the lies, transgressions, and broken agreements, who you need to say sorry to, what amends you want to make with the unreleased past issues. Um, <clears throat> you schedule releasing sessions and you write that down on your list. And then for the positive list, you uh, ask yourself what goals you're going to commit to, what actions you're going to take in the direction of those goals, and you decide for them, you commit for them. This is very simple, actually. There's no big deal, no big mystery or secret. Um, however, not many apply uh, this uh, on a monthly or at least yearly basis. Why don't they apply it? Why is this teaching not applied? Um, it's because of the tendency to keep that which is subconscious, subconscious. Because they are unwilling to experience a temporary discomfort for long-term gain. So that's the only thing this requires, a commitment to experience temporary discomforts in confronting your inner hurts. Also, feeling very alive and very energetic can have some consequences in your reality. Um, the consequence can be that things speed up, that your thoughts manifest more quickly, that your words manifest more quickly, and many people are actually uncomfortable with that. They are uncomfortable with quick and radical changes. Um, it takes them out of their comfort zone, and it's understandable that most people do not really want radical and quick changes, and not even positive changes. So it's good to be aware of the tendency of the mind and subconscious to want things to stay the way they are, even if things the way they are are no fun and not filled with energy. So in that case, and if that is the case with you, it's okay to take breaks from this and breaks from these kinds of teachings uh, if it all gets too much for you. It's okay not to concern yourself with this all the time. It's, it's even unhealthy to look at your subconscious programs all the time. Um, so this is not a... In general, this is not a technique to be using every day. That's why I say once a month or once a year, just to clear house, just to do a cleanup and to reclaim some of the energy you've lost and dispersed. I trust that uh, you will list them all and attend to them all eventually, and I trust that this is very helpful for, for you, that you will feel the difference in your life. So if this was very helpful for you, then please recommend this presentation far and wide. My name was Fred Dotson and is Fred Dotson and will be Fred Dotson. Thank you very much for listening.